Welcome to Chris's Retro Corner. Today we're looking at a composite signal mod for my Sinclair ZX81. The way your 80s home micro allowed a connection to a monitor of the day, unless you were very lucky or at least quite well off, monitors being a considerable investment of both pocket and birthday money, and then still probably requiring some additional assistance from the bank of mum and dad. Most of you will have experienced interacting with your 80s computer in the same way that I did, using the nearest domestic television set to hand. My first computer monitor was my trusty Ferguson Courier 12 inch black and white TV. If you're interested, this was specifically model number 3816. This TV had been passed to me by my father, who in turn had been given this by his auntie Jenny after she upgraded her own TV to a colour set probably sometime around the beginning of the 80s. The first computer that I owned, and still do, was a Commodore VIC-20, a computer capable of displaying an amazing 16 colours, the full glory of which I would not often see, unless I was lucky enough to be allowed to use my VIC-20 on the only other television set in the house at the time, my family's colour TV set in the front room. These, of course, were very special moments indeed. The inherent problem with using a home microcomputer through a regular television set is the need for the modulation of a sharp signal generated by the computer itself into an RF signal that the television can understand and display, a process that ultimately reduces the quality of the video output from these devices. I'm sure like me you remember spending what seemed to feel like hours fiddling with the dial on your TV set trying to find just the right spot to get the perfect picture from your computer or games console, or at least the best picture we could. Nowadays most modern TVs have digital tuning of the RF signal. This gives retro electronics enthusiasts a bit of a headache, as most old computer devices do not give the optimum signal from their RF output, and most TVs now do not allow for the very fine tuning required to find and set the best picture from your old device. Most modern TV sets do have inputs that will accept a component, RGB or composite signal in one way or another, and the retro computing and electronics scene have been finding ways to refine the signal and improve the picture quality from our cherished devices. The Sinclair ZX81 was released at the beginning of 1981 and it gives a black and white picture that can be particularly difficult to tune into a modern TV. Not only is the RF signal quite weak, early versions of the ZX81's ULA chip, the chip responsible for the video signal from your ZE, amongst other duties, was missing what's known as the back porch from the video signal out from this chip. Although a back porch is not strictly needed in a PAL TV signal, Modern TVs often have problems displaying a clear picture, often having a very little or no contrast because of this missing element. I have very kindly been sent this composite video mod to trial and review by Ricky El Kazim. Ricky is well known in retro computing circles in the UK his professionally designed and produced Arduino based digital tape players. These are of great value to any retro computer enthusiast who is looking to replace an old cassette player with a reliable experience. A link to his website is available in the description of this video. This back porch is a momentary pause in the video signal normally at zero volts just after a normally negative voltage new line synchronization pulse and it helps the TV establish when to start writing black elements of the new line being drawn out from the ZX81 to the screen. My ZX81 has no provision for negative voltage on its circuit board so this circuit works by conditioning the video signal to add in a back porch to the signal then offsetting that signal the low that would have been the negative voltage line synchronization pulse becoming zero volts, 
before then amplifying it for output. This mod is based on a design created by Jules per column B. A link to his work is available in the description of this video. And then miniaturizing it, resulting in what I'm sure you'll agree is a lovely looking little device. So let's have a look at the problem and then go on with fitting this mod and testing it out. So let's have a look at the problem in question then. And as you can see, the black just really isn't defined on the screen. It's not very clear. It's not going to be very usable. So let's see what we can do to remedy this situation. Plug in the soldering iron. There's not much soldering needed, but there is just a little bit. Somewhere around, I've got one of those wonderful soldering iron stands, the little springy devices. Obviously, I haven't got it in the corner with me now. So, let's open up. ZX81 and have a quick look at what we've got. to one side for now and there we go we can see the circuit board very carefully take out our two screws holding the circuit board to the top side of the case And oh dear, as you can see, my keyboard cable split. It's a common fault on these ZX81s, as the cables tend to dry out and become very brittle. However, there's a there's a little trick I might be able to do with this. So keep watching for another video, and let's see if we can sort that one out. So let's carefully unhook the other side keyboard connector. Put that to one side and let's just have a little look at what we're dealing with. So what I'm hoping to do is possibly fit this mod about here just on top of the RF modulator. I don't want to remove the RF modulator I want to keep that there and try and keep things as original as possible. However, I think I think that's going to fit just about inside the case. So we'll see. So 
not to one side you'll you'll note you'll note the four pins there so we've got we've got ground plus five volt a signal in video signal in that would normally be going to the RF modulator and then in the, is a video signal out as well so let's see if we can take this off Ooh. yep there we go excellent so can have a can have a, a little bit of a look inside there so what we've got going in is the signal just here and then we've also got plus five volts here I don't want to disturb too much so what I'm going to do is remove the signal just from the center pin of this phono connector here and then solder our new signal to that so what I've got is I've salvaged a part for our, an old computer so we should have four connectors on one side yes we do lovely look at that So I'll be using that and uh, routing, routing thus under the board and then soldering to points on the underside of the board. First of all, we need to disable this RF modulator. I'm not really going to disable it. I'm just going to take the signal off it. So I just want to disable it giving a giving an output of sorts. So taking the soldering iron there. Let's see. Let's see if we can't remove this wire here. Looks like it's looks like it's quite well stuck on there. This is our signal to the center connector of the RCA socket. So that's off and like I said I don't want to uh, don't want to muck about with this 81 too much I'm just going to move that out of the way slightly I can't imagine that's going to move and make contact with anything there so that's a that's a good start Just soldering iron slightly. Definitely will have to find myself that sprung stand. Okay. So, looking at the connector here, if I, if I zoom that a little closer, closer to you. You can see that we've got four connectors here and all four are being used on this side. However, I do want to keep the color coordination and have black for ground, red for plus five, and then the, the blue and the yellow for the, uh, for the signal in or from our ULA chip and then uh, and then the output from this mod. Okay then, let's go about fitting this mod. So the first thing I want to do is take our output signal wire from the mod and attach it to the pin in the middle of the RF modulator. Now, I want the mod to sit on top of the RF modulator, about here, and connect. So I don't need a particularly long piece of wire to reach around into the modulator and make contact with the pin. 
So leaving a little bit of slack, not too much, just a bit. I think that's where we need to cut it. Nip a little bit off the end. I say we can tin it. Move that out of the way just for a moment. Let's go and find our solder. Here we are. Just the thing. A little bit of blue tack there. Of a wobble going on. Splendid. And that should do just nicely. Bring our Zeddy back in. And what we'll do is just see if we can feed this wire straight through. There's a hole. There we go. Let's find the appropriate tool for the job. We'll just see if we can take that wire, just up, there we go. room in here than I first thought there was. Let's very, very carefully move these out of the way slightly. Let's see if we can take this wire up into the existing solder that's already on the pin. There we go. We can see that that's now nicely in place. So now that's there. Let's just solder that. There, job done. thing we do really is pop this back on because we don't need to go in here again and then using a, a little foam sticky pad we're going to cut this to, gonna cut this to size I'm going to try and secure it as best I can I'm going to pop that one there. Go on, 
Slip it in there in a second. Look at that. On there. And the third and final one. Just on the back. Carefully, we'll take those off. And we'll stick our little mod board just at the back here. Lovely. See, that's nicely supported. That's not going anywhere. I'm hoping there's enough clearance. I think there might be. Just to the back there. Super. Okay. So, let's attach our little circuit here. Making sure we've got it the right way around. So what we've got left for the ground plus five volts and the signal from the ULA chip in the first place. So let's start with this one. We'll take this round here, again making sure we've got a little bit of slack. And then what we're looking for in just a minute is pin 16 of the ULA chip. Now if we have a quick look on this side, a little hard to see now, but the notch for the chip is just here. So we'd start with pin 1 here, and we'd end up with pin 40 over here. So we'll need to count up from 1 to 16, or down from 20, whichever way you want to do it. So this is pin 16 here, so we need to make sure our wire reaches over. So we'll cut it just a little bit long. And we'll take the end off that. That's in it. Let's just make sure we've got a little extra solder on our soldering iron. I want to be quite quick when we're touching the, pinch, the chip pin. So twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen. It's this one just here. Not the neatest of jobs. Let's see if we can tidy that up just a little bit. Obviously, that was going to happen. Let's try that again. Splendid. And that should keep its place just nicely. So, the other leads that we're looking for remember, we're ground and plus 5 volts. This board doesn't deliver uh, a negative voltage at all. So we'll take those in this direction and take them over here. Again, little vent, just to make sure they hold the place. So for the ground, we're going to go just here, right here to the ground there. This is the ground for the underside of the RF modulator. And again, we'll just bear back 
just a little bit of wire. And we'll solder this to the existing point here. Again, I should have tinned the wire. It's a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. But that's the job done. And then lastly, we're taking plus five volts. Now, this big trace here that's plus 5, that's pin 40 of the ULA and that has plus 5 volts but I don't want to solder it directly on there if I don't have to so I'm going to take it from just over here measuring over about there cut that Bear off just a little bit. And what I should have done last time was turn the wire ever so slightly. So let's make sure we do that. There we go. And we'll solder this on just over here. There we go, and we're job done. So really, all that's left now is to test this and just make sure it works. And this time we're hoping to use the composite video input. So let's get our cable. And then let's get our power. And fingers crossed, we shall see if this was worked. Oh, the signal's really strong. Although I suspect something funny is going on with my little ZX81. So, unfortunately Ricky's mod hasn't worked first go, so I'll be getting in touch with Ricky and having a chat with him and seeing if we can't work out why this isn't working for me. In the meantime, I've done a little bit of tidying up as you can see. We're still getting exactly the same on our video output. However, what I did find 
is that we can very easily reverse this disconnecting the mod itself popping the top off our RF modulator and if I ever so carefully pop that resistor back in place so it's making good contact this is definitely harder than it looks there we go and that's that we take our RF signal pop that back in change the channel so we're looking at our analog TV signal again pop in the power Ooh, not quite making as good a contact as I thought it was You can see that our picture is pretty much back exactly where it was. So this mod is easily reversible and not intrusive at all. Well, thank you for joining me. I do appreciate it. And I do have to say many thanks again to Ricky El Kazim for sending in this mod for review. So unfortunately, this mod didn't work first time. I'll be having a chat with Ricky and seeing if we can't get this working and do an update to this video soon. Ricky plans to have these on sale on his website, youmakerobots.com, as well as eBay and several of the Sinclair user groups that are on Facebook. Currently, Ricky has temporarily switched gears and is 3D printing face visors, donating this much needed PPE to our NHS. I think that everyone within the NHS is doing a really fantastic job at this time and they really deserve both our respect and support. It's a smashing thing that Ricky is doing, so a very well deserved well done to him. If you have any questions or comments, please do get in touch in the comments below. But for now, thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video soon.